Welcome back around to our restoration, everybody. My name's Chris. Next to me here is my 1964 Triumph TR4 that I'm restoring. If you uh, had watched the last video, you saw that I got a patch piece in with strengthening ribs in it. I was going to fit that up the last visit and uh, mess that piece all up, unfortunately. So now I'm going to have to redo it. And then the wooden bucks couldn't withstand the, the force of the press anymore. So I'm going to have to go into the, a little bit of a redesign of that. Also, I have resurrected my long since dormant blog. I'll put a link in the description and up here somewhere. But anyway, enough of me talking. Let's get to work. I'll show you how hopefully, hopefully we'll get it done. Thanks for watching. So I'm gonna use the same general approach. You can see I've got this piece of metal here that I already kind of played with. And there's a little, I don't really know what caused that, but a little thing in there. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to just smash that flat a little bit and go ahead and use this piece. So I still have my original piece. And I'm gonna size this all up. And then this will be my base. This will be the top of the sandwich. And then in between, instead of using another piece of metal, I've got this bar stock here that I've cut and made to fit my die. I'm still using the die and that fits pretty tight in there and I'm going to put these in between the pieces of wood and then press down with it and hopefully this will be much more stable and much more resilient to, to flexing inside the press and it'll be able to withstand a, a harder oomph that, that the wood that was in between just, just couldn't hack. So I'm going to go ahead and size this up like I said and measure it up. I want to also place this in this mold or in this form where I can bend the flange. I had problems bending the flange in the other piece getting it sized up right because of the ribs were already in it and it was I couldn't like get it in the vise without fear of crushing the ribs and I just I bent the bent the flange at the wrong spot and I couldn't really go back and fix it without without tearing stuff up and everything that that kind of contributed to me doing this all over again. But anyway, gonna go ahead and get this measured up and lined up and everything get it in the form, get that all measured up and then be able to give me a room to, to cut my flange out and start going from there. So what I've done so far, I drilled holes. I already had these four holes in the metal because this is what is going off of the last form that I destroyed. So I drilled new holes in this metal. I've got one piece that's already set up and that's what helped me make this depression. So I'm gonna use that again for the other side with the die. And I'm just going to use these kind of just to rest them in here as spacers. I'm not going to um, make up another one of these these things because I don't have to. So I'll just use these as spacers to space along. The trick is, however, is I made my marks on this side because it's easier to line the donor piece up like that and get everything measured up. But now I've got to transfer it to the other side. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet so that I can have it uh, proper. And I want to drill a hole up here so I can kind of pinch it up there, at least those three spots. And again, I'm just trying to keep this metal from moving around on me. But I do have the, uh, the flange marked, so that, that lines up with the bottom of the wood, so I'll be able to bang the flange over once this is all good and in here. But, so I'm just going to stick this metal in here, get that nice and pinched, put the form over here once I get it lined up, and then drill holes in this guy to line up with the holes that I'm going to do there. And then hopefully at that point I'll be set. I'll get it all sandwiched together, get it in the press, and get it uh, get it get it looking like it should. Got the bottom board. I got my supports in here, and I got the holes drilled. There's four spots or three spots, excuse me, that the, the metal is going to be held down. I don't expect it to shift at all. Now what the trick is is I've got to figure out how deep in this is going to go because again the marks that I made are kind of blind. So all I'm going to do is line this up to where it penetrates that way into the metal, put a little mark right here, and then that way I can know, and I'll push this in, and it'll hit that stop, and it'll go in as far as it needs to go, Then I'll put the top board back on and, and sandwich it all down. I still have to cut the relief holes into this one to uh, give me room so the press can get in there, so once I get this sized up, I'm going to put this cover back on, bolt it down, trace out where my relief holes should be, or at least I think they should be, the slots there, and then take it all apart, cut this out, sandwich it all back up, and get it in the press. It's a pain in the rear. Got my base, got the bolts already in there. Now I'll come in with the piece of metal for what I'm actually doing here. Get my stuff lined up right. So that's gonna go like that. But first, my spacers. Just putting a spacer here, 
and a spacer here just to give me some room. And then this guy is going to go on like that with this end here, and it'll get pushed in. Then I've got the notch cut out of the this top board here. I'm not real crazy about how close this is to the edge. I have a feeling this might crack. I don't really, there's not going to be any pressure on this. It, it might not, but I just have a bad feeling that it might. All right, so get that kind of set up. Now I'll take my die, and I've got to line this piece up with the die here. I've got the marks on the die for where I want it to, how far in it needs to go. And I drew lines on the metal here so that I could use it to guide me. And I also can obviously now see where the metal is. So that makes it convenient. Things a little unwieldy, stuff's kind of all over the place. All right, so I got the mark on the die. Looks like it's straight. Should be good to go ahead and tighten these down now. The trick is to keep this somewhat tight together as I tighten this down so that the little pieces of metal don't shift around. All right, so that should be all tight, hopefully. When I put the die in, I just put it in as far as that line goes and I'll be able to press down and hopefully it'll work. Cross the fingers. All right, here we go. Well, it's crooked this way for some reason. Hmm. It's because that piece of metal is not straight. Yeah, this wood definitely can't handle this. Yeah, and I didn't get, didn't get anywhere near enough out of that. So I think what the problem is, is that these bolts are putting undue stress on the, on the dot, on the wood, and it's allowing it to kind of move around and everything. Everything's not flat. It's not fully supported, and it's allowing it to crack. You can see I put that big old crack in it, and I didn't really get any depression. That's really at all in this thing. And now I've got to come up with something else. I did have a piece of metal, if you noticed. And I think because the metal is obviously not going to flex at all, it's not going to allow these bolts any, any wiggle room. So now I've just got a piece of wood under here and all three bolts heads are sitting on the wood. So I'm hoping as I compress this, the bolts will sink in and depress into this wood. And then from there, it'll essentially flatten out against the hardwood and it'll, it'll stop it from, it'll apply pressure evenly and, and spread it out a little bit so it's not so much on one piece. So we'll see if this works. That it didn't replace that bottom board. I can I can do that if I need to. I, I may if this doesn't work. Well, you can see what I just did there. We're just essentially pressing it using the die, and that was it. Didn't need the top wood piece of wood to guide anything, so that was a waste of time and effort in making that top piece of wood. You can just essentially use your bottom piece here. So I think I'm going to be happy with this. It's going to need some work and some finagling it and, and fine-tuning and everything. It's not it's not perfect by any means, but it's, it's functional, and, it, and it'll, I think it'll look fine. So now I'm going to Go ahead and make my flange, the line here, bend the flange over and be able to, uh, to I will put that in the wood and, and press it together so that I can have a, a hard edge to go over and not have to put this in the vise. And then I should be ready to put the new piece on, or the old piece, excuse me, and trace this stuff out and get it uh, shaped up so that it can go in the car finally. What I've done here now is taken that one piece of wood that I used for the template and made it so I can now pinch this in between the two pieces of wood so I can bend over and make the flange. Hopefully this will also tend to flatten this out because it's, uh, it's got pretty wonky as it uh, got pressed. All right, so that's pinched in there. Now I'm just gonna smack the flange over and uh, that should uh, wrap it up as far as that goes and be ready to look at getting it actually sized up. Got the new piece here, got it traced out. 
if you remember in the last video I talked about, this is going to be a curve in here, so I'm just blocking it off to make give me a lot of room and a lot of metal to play with. So I'm looking at several holes here that I'm going to fill with weld. I'll do that before I put it on the car, just to be easier to handle the piece. But first off, I'm just going to trace around that black line, cut this stuff out. Obviously the flange is huge, but that's okay. A lot of wasted metal with this piece, but you know it's a, it is a it is a a lesson learning thing. So we'll go ahead and get this cut out get it up, fit it up to the car, and see what it looks like. I did take the grinder to the car a little bit, so that the original piece is probably now too small, because I did take a little bit of money, or metal off the car itself. So I'm gonna cut a good chunk on the, on the outside of the black line here, just to make sure that I don't cut too much, and end up having to do this all over again, which I obviously don't wanna do. So we're gonna go ahead, make a lot of noise, make a lot of sparky sparks, Get this thing cut out, start fitting it up. Well, I got it in there. The uh, the fit up's not too bad. Got a little bit of a gap here. I'll just try to fill that with weld, I think. That's, um, that'll be okay. The, the ribs are just a touch wider. They look better from the other side, actually. I'll show you here in a little, in a little bit. The, the ribs are just a touch wider on this side than they were coming out of here, so I, I can probably weld that up and cover it up. The, uh, there's a little bit of a flex here, so I'll have to press it in, spot weld it, and then pull it back out as I make my way down. But everything seems to line up pretty good. The, uh, the flange is still a little wide. I'm not worried about that. I can shave that down. Obviously, I got this big corner piece here. I would need to paint this little piece over in here, and I got to cut the little hole for the bolt hole to go into. And let's see what else. I think that's about it. I, what I got to look at, I got to go to the other side real quick. I don't know if I want to put the holes in this flange for the spot welds or use that flange from the floor and weld up from underneath. I'm not sure. Six one way, half a dozen another probably. But, uh, but if I can do it on the floor, I think it might be a little easier. Though I'm going to have to weld on my back, which won't, won't be cool. Maybe I'll just use sheet metal screws or something like that. But I want to get all this stuff done and prepped on this piece before I, before I tack it in. So much uh, trial and error. Let me show you the other side. So there's the other side. And on the upper portion up in here, you can see there, you can see that black line. That's the mistake that I made the last time. So here I, I set that up again and traced that black line and figured out after I traced it that, wait a minute, this is the same thing that I'm looking at last time and you can see how much distance is in that gap there and essentially what I think it comes down to is the fact that I didn't have the two ribs exactly parallel to each other so I'm trying to line them up straight on the car and then it causes it to go a little bit crooked and it doesn't work very well so I was smarter this time and was able to compensate for it so you can see that the ribs line up pretty good on this side but the uh, the other side like I said it's uh, kind of hard to get in there but they're, they're a little fat. So I clean up in here too, get this paint off so that I can, can weld from this side and get penetration in here and uh, move along. All right, all welded up, ground smooth. Looks pretty good, not horrible. So now we're gonna go over and do final fit, get some paint. I also got the little hole notched out here and go at it. So while I've been working on that stuff, what I got going on in here is these are the brackets for the floor. So these go out and weld to the floor. If you can see these like silver spots are all the spot welds that the factory did. These weld to the floor and then just provide structural support. And this is what bolts on to the outer, the, the outriggers that come out from the frame and go out to like almost underneath the door. If you had watched some of my other videos when I use this ultrasonic sink, I tried to put stuff in containers to not gunk up the inside of the sink itself but these aren't really lending themselves to it because they're a little big. Just did the whole, did the whole basket this time, just in some, uh, some degreaser, but that one still needs, still needs some cleaning. So I'll get this plug back in, go for another 15 or 20 minutes or so, and this should be okay. All fit up, uh, with the exception of a little bit more prep work ready to weld in. There's a little bit of bow to it, but nothing that I, as I go through, I'll tack it and it'll hold it in and I'll make my, weave my way down. Some gaps are a little bit big, but not too bad. Actually, not as bad as uh, some other things I've done, of course. So we'll look at getting this in soon. Getting ready to hit this with weld through primer. And I have a uh, captive nut on the other side here. Don't want to get the threads all gummed up with paint. 
So what I do is I take a earplug, come from the opposite side so you don't have this big old, you know, glob of earplug sticking out. Get it twisted up just like you would go to put it in your ear. Go ahead and slide it through the threads. Let it protrude a little bit at the other side. All right, and do that and it'll expand and fill the hole up. And you don't have to worry about getting paint in the threads. I'm lucky enough to work at a place where earplugs are all over the place and we can uh, acquire them on a daily basis. You know, you can take a paper towel or something like that and tear that up and twist it up and, and jam it in there too. It serves the same purpose, but these are reusable and it makes it a little more slick. All right, everybody, that's all I got. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment below, tell me what you think. Short one, turns out, getting old sucks. Tweaked my back, picking up that ultrasonic sink full of water, and now it's, uh, it's getting progressively worse and I'm hobbling around here, so I'm gonna have to call it, call it early. Uh, I did get that piece ready to go. It's pretty much fit in. Got some spray paint on it for well through primer on it for that one where it's uh, sandwiched together, so that should be good. Probably not gonna have a video here for a couple weeks. Got some personal commitments to take care of, but outside of that, that's all I got. Thanks again for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers.